Sure. I mean, if I um, we spoke about the economy and uh, the transition of uh, uh, Cambodia to a middle-income country, which is of course good news because it shows Cambodia has experienced very substantial growth over the past uh, a few years to actually get to that level of middle-income country. Uh, but of course, uh, with that, countries outside of Cambodia will treat you differently. And uh, 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 with its current least developed uh, country status come a lot of advantages when it comes to trade preferences. So uh, when Cambodia graduates, uh, some of these trade uh, preferences might automatically uh, cease to exist. Uh, and if, as the projections currently go, uh, you will in effect become a, a, least, a middle income country in 2027, we enter a, a transitional period of uh, three years where everything but arms, the current trade regime, is still in force, but then as of 2030, uh, we will be treated differently under a different trade regime. So that means two things. One is uh, we will uh, reduce the, uh, uh, the, or rather increase the tariffs on uh, products of Cambodia coming in. And secondly, the rules of origin might change. Now. What, mean, what does that mean, rules of origin? It sounds very technical, but it means that uh, what we will require is products that are produced here in Cambodia should undergo what we call a double transformation. That means you cannot import products into Cambodia and then just export them to the European Union as Cambodian products. You need to actually process them here. So that's one of the things that we'll be working on with uh, the Cambodian um, uh, government, with the uh, private sector, to move, as we say, Cambodia up the value chain. I'll give you one example. Uh, uh, cashew nuts. Yeah. You, um, uh, uh, there's a quite substantial uh, production of uh, cashew nuts in uh, Cambodia. But once they're produced, uh, they go outside of the country to be processed before they are being uh, exports, exported to the European market or to other markets in the world. So we want to assist the cashew nut producers in partnership with the government to ensure that the process is, is done here so that before they're exported, they're actually a complete uh, product. Uh, and I also hear they taste very well, but I, I'll... I'll I'll confirm that once I've tried. <laughs> All right, so the rules of origin, so that means that Cambodia needs to use its own raw materials as, as well, right? Absolutely. It goes, bo it goes both ways. So if you are to produce uh, raw materia materials, you need to make sure that you process them here before you export. It also means that if you import products before you export them back to the European Union, you need to process them. So it's all about adding value to the processing in what we call the value chain in Cambodia. All right, Mr. Ambassador, so uh, talking about the tariff preferences and also the EBA, the everything but arm, it is the most discussed topic here in Cambodia, I would say. So um, is it likely that Cambodia like, will lose it completely once it's graduate from the least developed uh, countries uh, status? And, and I just want to know uh, what uh, could be the impact. I think more or less it will have an, an, an impact on uh, the Cambodian's e economy. So uh, what will be the impact that Cambodia might face accordingly? Sure. Um, so uh, automatically, once you become a middle-income country, the trade regime change. Mm. And for us, and it's different for the United States, different for Canada, for other uh, partners in the world, but for us, uh, you automatically uh, are under what we call the generalized system of preferences, GSP. So uh, GSP has much less trade preferences than the current everything but arms uh, uh, trade regime so that the tariffs will uh, increase. There, uh, I should add to this that Cambodia can ask to become an upgraded partner under what we call GSP Plus. And um, 
uh, then we get into a system that is somewhere in between GSP and everything but arms. And once we would get that request, we would need to discuss with the Cambodian government. Of course, there's a number of uh, conventions that the Cambodian government would need to uh, comply uh, with, but it's a s somehow a, a better or upgraded system as compared to uh, GSP. So um, there's still some years to go, but it's a very important uh, discussion and we're keen to have this already now. That's why uh, we work with, with, with the government, with other partners, to make sure that um, the industry is ready, that the private sector is ready, that the government understands all the implications uh, and that we help Cambodia and its industry to move along the value chain. Oh, uh, so that means uh, before the EBA is withdrawn completely from Cambodia, the EU is now helping Cambodia. Uh, for example, uh, you say to add the uh, like to add the value exactly. to the process product. Exactly. And exactly. Also help it to um, help it during the tran transitional. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Which is of course important. Uh, for us, knowing what I just told you in terms of uh, our rules of origin, but of course it's very good for the Cambodian economy in general because uh, you want to uh, uh, improve your economy further, you want to ensure that the sufficient processing is done uh, uh, in uh, Cambodia and you want to make sure that uh, eventually you don't get stuck in what they call the middle income trap, which is that you get there but then it's difficult to transform the uh, economy and to grow further. Mm. So this is what we, we want to partner with, um, with the private sector, with the industry and with the government on. Yeah, so um, do you think it is good for Cambodia to graduate from the least developed country status? Well, I mean, of course, it's, it's big news. It means that your economy has been growing and growing five, six, seven uh, percent over the last uh, couple of years. It, become, it means that you become richer. Yeah. And I think you can, anybody who's been in Phnom Penh 10 years ago and now, they can, they can uh, see the comparison. They can feel uh, the economic uh, uh, vibe. But I think it's normal that partners treat a poor country differently than they treat a middle-income country. Uh, hence the different kind of trade regimes that not just us but many uh, around the world have with least developed countries as compared to others.